Today I'll be talking about the Navigator Cardiovascular Clinical Decision Support System using a case study of a patient with sepsis that progressed to septic shock. The Navigator translates patient data into therapeutic guidance for volume, vasoactives and cardioactives. I'll start by orientating you briefly to the graphical display. There are three main features. First, you can see grey coloured X and Y axes. The x-axis is a resistance scale and measures the patient's resistive state or systemic vascular resistance, SVR. This scale moves horizontally to keep the target resistance in the target zone. The y-axis has two scales. The left scale is the volume, PMS scale, and measures the patient's volume state. It moves vertically in response to changes in the patient's circulating volume state. The right scale is the heart performance, EH scale, and measures the capacity of the heart to pump. It moves vertically in response to changes in cardiac performance. Two red tick marks on the three scales show the position of the patient. Second, you can see a solid yellow trapezoid in the centre of the graph. This area represents the patient target zone, or PTZ. The size of the PTZ is determined when the clinician enters the target mean arterial pressure, MAP, and cardiac output, CO, values. Third, the patient status, or position, is identified by a red dot and arrow at the intersection of the bolded yellow broken map and CO lines that extend from the PTZ. The goal of therapy is to move the patient into the PTZ. To begin with the case study, a 57-year-old woman, previously fit and well, presents to your emergency department with a 36-hour history of moderate to severe right flank and back pain. She is presented to hospital as she has progressed to feeling really unwell over four hours, as if she was getting the flu, but much worse. Her vital signs reveal that she has an elevated temperature, a mild tachycardia and low blood pressure. When examined, she looks flushed and feels peripherally warm. On percussion, she has severe tenderness over her right renal area and adjacent back. Her initial blood results show haemoglobin 130 grams per litre, an elevated white cell count and no abnormalities detected in the urine. The clinician suspects her low blood pressure is due to the effects of an infection possibly from her urinary tract or spinal column. They begin fluid resuscitation immediately to treat the hypotension. Concurrently, they send blood off for lactate, take blood cultures, then commence broad-spectrum antibiotics. Her blood pressure does not respond to the fluid challenge, so hemodynamic monitoring is commenced and the monitors are connected to the navigator. You can see on the navigator graphical display the clinician has set the PTZ parameters using the Surviving Sepsis Guidelines Protocol Watch. The patient's status shows her current MAP of 53 and CO of 5.6. Her current RAP is 5 and can be found in blue in the upper right display pane. I will now continue the navigator simulation. The actual events displayed on the graph took place over a number of hours. Please select Play. The clinician suspects the patient has severe sepsis and prescribes fluid challenges to treat the low MAP, RAP and CO. The patient's status is seen moving upward in response to the fluid as the volume state is increasing. Her CO has responded by increasing to greater than 6.1. It is now in the target range, shown when the CO dotted line disappeared into the PTZ. The volume, PMS scale, moves to reflect the increase in volume state as the MAP increases to 61. Repeat bloods show the patient's HB has decreased to 98 grams per litre. When entered in Navigator, the red zone becomes prominent. The upper boundary of this zone represents an oxygen delivery index, DO2I, of 300 ml per metre squared per minute. This level is critical but does not require consideration now. A combination of fluid loss from the bloodstream into the tissues and sepsis-induced arterial vasodilatation causes worsening hypotension. The systemic vascular resistance, SVR, decreases, shown by the patient's status moving to the left. The addition of a vasopressor to the volume loading will provide arterial vasoconstriction and move the patient to the right towards the PTZ. The clinician commences a norepinephrine infusion and titrates the dose to increase the MAP to greater than 65. Further fluid challenges and norepinephrine venoconstriction result in additional upward volume PMS movement as the patient status enters target. The increased volume has also resulted in the ROP increasing to 14. Ongoing septic shock causes progressive arterial vasodilatation, resulting in decreasing SVR. 
The graphical display enables quick discrimination between hypovolemia and vasodilatation as a cause of hypotension. Movement of the patient's status along the x-axis indicates vasodilatation as the primary cause for persistent hypotension. Additional fluid challenges result in minimal upward movement of the patient's status towards target, despite an increase on the volume PMS scale. This action indicates the patient is no longer volume responsive. The patient's status is close to the x-axis and moves to the right and towards the PTZ by titration of the norepinephrine infusion alone. When hemodynamically stable, the source of sepsis was investigated with a CT scan that showed a stone obstructing the right ureter. The obstructing stone was removed, thus controlling the septicemia, and the patient improved over 24 hours. The Navigator Cardiovascular Clinical Decision Support System assisted the clinician by displaying a single real-time physiological picture of the patient's circulatory status. The graphical interface supported the diagnosis of severe sepsis and displayed precise, real-time reactions to cardiovascular management.